All right, this is the other side of that same pig. And as you can tell, it doesn't have the tail there because it was on the other side. I removed the jowl already. And you'll see here that the foot was removed and part of the skin was removed. So there was some scarring in here. When it was processed, somebody did a little, got a little crazy with the knife. Or when it was split, they accidentally hit this leg. So they can't leave that on there, and that's why that was removed. And that description, you heard that. So the forefoot is removed at the hock. The hind foot is still on here. It's exactly this, you know, the, the structure is still the same. It's just the mirror image. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this into an alternative separation that we do for export. This is to shorten up the loin and to leave some of those muscles and bones that we cut in half on that second rib break, that first and second rib break, we're gonna leave intact by separating this side of the carcass with what's called a fourth and sixth rib break, where we actually cut diagonally through the fifth rib and make what's called a long shoulder. We'll remove the rib, the, those four and a half ribs and the neck bones and we'll roll the boneless butt off of that shoulder to create what's called an outside shoulder. And then we'll also take the ham and instead of separating it right here, anterior to the H bone, we're going to separate it at the sirloin and remove that. So we'll have basically a center cut loin that's left in the center, which is what we like to export. And it leaves these longer primals on either end of that center. And then what we'll do is we'll look at some of the muscles that are in that shoulder. So you can see some individual muscles that you probably heard about. And we'll take the ham apart so you can see the individual muscles because this really is a great opportunity to do some good things with some beautiful meat if you take the ham apart and treat each muscle separately. So we're going to take a look at those. So the first thing we'll do is this fourth and sixth rib break which is counting again from the front, one, two, three, four. That's where I'll make my scribe mark. And then here is the fifth rib, right in here, and this is the sixth. So I'm gonna go at the tip of the sixth and the bottom of the fourth, and I'm gonna cut straight through here. And what you'll see is when I cut through the ribs, I'm done with the saw because I've left the entire scapula or shoulder blade up here in the shoulder now. So I should be able to get through this if I pick the right place with a sharp knife. See? Now I've got a long shoulder. And I'm going to take this leg and the same landmarks that I used to separate the sirloin, I'm going to separate doing that straight cut roughly perpendicular to an imaginary medial line in the animal. So now I've got the long leg, the center cut loin with the belly on it, now, if I took this and removed all of the ribs and the spinal bones here, the vertebra, that center cut is often known in the butchering world as an Irish loin because that's what back bacon would be made from, which is this whole long section and right in here. So I'd remove that, and it's also what, what the Italian tronchetta di porchetta would be made from. You would take the bones out of here, you take the tenderloin out of here, set the tenderloin back in, season it, roll it up, truss it up. And that's your tronchetta di porchetta. Move the flank. Also, this is the ham end, sirloin end. This is the shoulder end. If I cut a chop from here, leaving the bone in,
and you're seeing this appear on menus more and more these days. And this is a beautiful thing right here. That's your country style chop with the ribs in it. If I trim this down and threw that on the grill, that's some good eating right there. Now let's take this shoulder apart. Now keep my eye on this. I'm going to take again these four and a half ribs and the neck bones out of here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little extra lean on those ribs. And I'm going to create a byproduct of making this outside shoulder for export. Which are these four and a half ribs. If I take this breast bone and cartilage is off. And if I cut this off right here, these ribs would be called Karubi ribs. And this is similar, if you cut it on a bandsaw, perpendicular to the ribs, it's like a pork short rib. So it's a nice little byproduct that comes out of cutting the shoulder this way. And what we'll do here, rather than separating this longer butt from the longer picnic that we created by leaving those extra ribs on there, we're going to roll this off by following this natural seam. and create two cuts. And I'm following the top of the scapula right here. It's right here. If I follow it until I get to the end, until I get to the tip of it, and I pull this off, and when I get to the tip of that scapula, if I make a straight cut right through, this is a collar button or a pork collar. It's called that because it has this piece of skin and fat on it. This is a great cut. This is an outside picnic shoulder. And we'll take this apart in a second. But this collar butt, this muscle right here is called the money muscle. That's what you give to the judge right there, that little tiger muscle. But if we take this skin off of here, If you cut this into cross-cut portions, wrap it in a little pancetta, some string, cook it like an asabuco style, it's boneless, it's beautiful. You can eat it with a fork, it's beautiful. It comes right out of that collar butt. It's a lovely piece of meat right there. Now we've got this outside shoulder, outside muscle. And one of the things you'll get out of here, if you start to take it apart, I'm just going to trim it up so we can look at some stuff here, is right in here, there's a muscle that, ex that is exposed right here, and it's actually the brisket. It's pectoralis profundus. It's the pectoral meat. And it sits right here. And I'm going to pull it out of here so you can take a look at it. You can buy these as um, pork brisket or brisket griller. It's in retail. It's called a brisket griller. 
But because we cut that long shoulder, this piece of meat is intact. Rather than cutting in half, which we would do in that other break. And that's your entire pork brisket. This is a great little cut. Another muscle that's in here, it's a small muscle, it's a nice muscle, but it's small and there's only two in the animal, is the teres major, which in, um, I know in beef they call it a bistro filet. We call it a petite shoulder tender. It just sits right here. It's a nice little muscle that uh, you can see what it looks like. It's beautiful. It's like uh, in, in beef, years ago, before they started to do opportunity cuts or value cuts, we used to call that the scotch tender. So, uh, but it's a nice little muscle that if you're taking a pig apart, these are a couple that you might want to pick out yourself. Little Scooby snacks in the kitchen. The rest of this is, you know, is really just for grinding or for barbecuing, the whole picnic shoulder. So we'll set that aside and we'll take this ham apart. When we're done here, if anybody wants to take any of these cuts, <laughs> any of these cuts, um, Stephen's been uh, gracious enough to let us, uh, you know, use the stove and cook some things up, taste some things if you're interested in uh, and trying some of these out. We're going to go ahead and take the tailbone out of this. And I encourage any of you that do your own butchering, wear a cut-proof glove. It's not a big investment. As I like to say, the trick is to do it without your fingers leaving your hand. This is now semi-boneless. This is a semi-boneless ham. We've got the condyle of the femur exposed here. I'm going to trim this fat off. And we're going to take this ham down to some individual muscles just to look at them to see what's in here. And in order to do that, we'll, we'll remove the hind foot just above the hock. And then I'm going to go ahead and skin this thing out. Chicharron. Let me take a little of this fat off. All right, one of the first muscles we're going to see here is the cap to the inside muscle. This is the gracilis. If anybody's ever roasted a top round, you know how it has that cap on it? This is that muscle and it comes off pretty easily. These are pulled off in the plant when they're breaking down hams to make deli ham. They'll take these muscles apart on the boning line. This comes off and gets thrown into a big 2,000 pound combo. This muscle right here is like a little skirt steak. And uh, it's a fantastic muscle for making like uh, fajita or direct heat grilling. And that exposes the inside muscle. We're going to take off this inside muscle, which is the semimembranosis. And we'll take off the 
outside muscle. And you'll see that this seam right here is along this muscle that is, has a, a cross grain to it. This is the semitendinosus, which is like the eye of the ham, or the ham eye. And we'll expose that as well. Because that's something that you can buy or cut yourself as well. And it's a great muscle. Again, if you treat some of these muscles individually rather than as a whole and try to cook them all at the same time at the same temperature, you'll really get great results. So that's the inside muscle. And what's left here, besides the boneless sirloin, and the boneless sirloin right here is, this is used a lot as for the old uh, Iowa tenderloin. They'll cut this and pound it and fry it. And that's a great muscle to fool around with. It eats really well. These are all locomotion muscles, so they have a lot of glycogen in them, a lot of myoglobin in them, carrying oxygen to them for energy. So they're higher pH, they have higher water holding capacity, they're real tender. This semitendinosus muscle right here, or the ham eye, is a really great muscle to fool around with too. And we'll separate this from the larger muscle. That's the ham eye. Trim it up. What's nice about this is that it's beautiful. Great marbling, tender, makes beautiful little medallions. You can wrap it in bacon. Good muscle. The rest of this is the bottom round, or the bottom round flat, and that would be something you would use for like schnitzel, you know, cutting medallions out of it, pound it out, eat it thin. It does have that kind of ham flavor to it, so um, you want to be careful how you use that. But that is about all that's left here besides the knuckle, which is right in here. The knuckle is also called, in food service, it's called a knuckle. In retail, it's called a sirloin tip roast. And I'm just following right along the femur here till I get to the patella. And this is actually three muscles that are left here attached together. One is the tensor fascia that holds it to the, to the holds the, the two muscle, the muscle group to the leg. It's the TFL, tensor fascia lati, which I remove that, it's actually the TFL is a tri-tip. So if we remove the TFL, you've got a little pork tri-tip here. And then what's left are two muscles. That's a pork tri-tip. And the other two muscles that are left This is vastus lateralis and rectus femoris, and that's a sirloin tip roast. This is a great little rotisserie item. It's really good to roast these and put them on the slicer for roast pork if you're doing like Cuban sandwiches or something where you want roast pork rather than using loin meat, which could be drier, to use this, which has better water holding capacity for slicing. And you'll see that it has no connective tissue. It's really pretty. That's a great muscle too. Just a couple of things that come out of that export break. 
which is a byproduct of getting to this center loin. Getting to that center loin is what we do to export this to Japan. So you get the benefit of that by having that longer shoulder and the longer leg. Any questions on that? That's it. Thanks.